What's up everybody, I'm Alex. And I'm Mark. And we are the Vaga Brothers. This week we're in Barcelona, Spain. It's one of the biggest tourist destinations in all of Europe. But we're not here to see the sights. We're here chasing down a story that's fascinated us since our first days in Spain. It's one that has its roots in civil war and revolution. And you won't find this in your guidebook. So this week we're here to track down the people who can tell us their story. The hidden history of anarchism in Barcelona. This story starts with a symbol. The red A of anarchy. It's a symbol we've seen in every corner of Spain, the one that we used to associate with the sex pistols. But in Spain, it's much more than that. Here, it's a symbol with a bloody history. From a time when Spain was an ideological battleground. A time of hope, violence, chaos. A history many Spaniards would rather forget. But one whose echoes can still be heard in the streets of Barcelona today. We had a hunch that the air of anarchism could be alive and well in the abandoned buildings of Barcelona. So we set off to follow the Red A's down the rabbit hole. So what is the typical Barcelona experience? Maybe a stroll down Las Ramblas, eating some overpriced tapas or drinking sangria? How about a museum or some of Gaudi's architecture? Yet some of the city's most interesting buildings don't have lines out the front door. They have bars on the windows. And once we got past the tourist trail, the first thing we noticed about Barcelona is that it was full of squats. When we say squats, we don't mean popping a squat. We mean living on someone else's property. We also noticed that most squats, or Casa Ocupas, were covered in anarchist signs. As Spain's housing crisis goes into four years of economic recession, there are more empty buildings on the market than ever before. Considering half the people our age can't find work, it's pretty easy to see how rent-free life could be attractive. But perhaps it was more than that. Could the Ocupa movement be the latest manifestation of something from Barcelona's turbulent past? So we dropped in on one of Barcelona's many Casa Ocupas to try to find out more. We asked them, what does living in an abandoned building have to do with anarchy? And they told us it wasn't about anarchy, it was about anarchism. And that their story began over 150 years ago. They told us the story of the anarchist dream. And it went a little something like this. Barcelona was one of the first Spanish cities to industrialize. Hundreds of new factories transformed the region and created immense wealth. That is, for some people at least. Barcelona became two cities. The factory owners lived in designer mansions while their workers lived in tenements. Inequality divided the city and made fertile ground for the anarchist ideologies coming from the east. In Barcelona, workers dreamed of kicking out the boss, running the factory themselves, and finally controlling their own destiny. So to learn more, we skated across town to meet up with Nick Lloyd, a specialist on anarchism who runs a tour in the city. We hoped he could help fill in some blanks. Why, why Barcelona? Why Spain? Well, one thing you'd say is until the 20th century there's nothing unique about Spain. Anarchism has a very long history in France and Italy and Eastern Europe and, and elsewhere. Uh, the, the difference is at some point in the 20th century, early 20th century, it gets supplanted by socialism and communism in the rest of Europe. And in Spain, it, instead of that, it grows. Hundreds of thousands of workers rallied behind the anarchist trade unions, the CNT and the FAI. But violent repression bred radicalization, attempted uprisings, and deadly shootouts between anarchists and hired guns. So we asked Nick how all this crazy history seemed to converge here in Barcelona. Historically, it's always been the, the city which is most associated with anarchism because it's the place where the most remarkable social experiment in anarchism ever took place, which is in this, the summer of 1936. 1936, decades of division reach a boiling point. Right-wing generals plot a coup against the left-wing republic in the name of Old Spain. Enter Francisco Franco. An ambitious general stationed in Morocco who, like others, thinks the only way to save Spain is to kick out the crazies and restore the old order. On July 17th, rebel generals launch a coup and Franco is airlifted back to Spain thanks to history's biggest asshole, Hitler. Battles erupt across the country and so begins the Spanish Civil War. Instantly, Barcelona is under fascist attack. Anarchist leaders declare a strike and call on the workers to defend the city. 
during the fighting, storm the barracks and get hold of somewhere between 30 and 50,000 weapons. And after five days of chaos in the city, if you like, and a key, not anarchism. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Um, they, the, the anarchist leaders call off the general strike and in the name of anti-fascist unity say everybody back to work. But the workers have a very different idea and the anarchist militants have a very different idea and they use this sudden power they have and to take over their workplaces to take over the factories. Wait a second, so they took over their workplaces? Wasn't that the dream those guys in the Akupa movement were talking about? Yeah, I think so. Nick told us how after stopping the fascists, the anarchists had their chance to turn their dream into reality. An egalitarian society based on collectivism and individualism. Factories self-organized production and were run by committees. Barter was substituted for money. Workers turned five-star hotels into cantinas and established free libraries, schools, and cultural centers. Often in churches and former villas of the rich. For a moment, it seemed that their dream had become reality. So to set the scene, Nick led us to Las Ramblas and took us back into time. Look that way and that's just imagine it's not this rich prosperous tourist city but it's a city in which there's been a unique proletarian revolution. So there's men and women walking up the Ramblas, blue overalls on, rough clothes, rifles over their shoulders and there's a look of expectation and hope on people's faces. They really believe they're on the cusp of a new society. The line at the time was, we carry a new world in our hearts. They see you and they say, gracias camaradas. No pasarán, abajo a fascismo. But one person's dream is another's nightmare. The revolution unleashed decades of pent-up aggression against the old order, most visibly the church. The 500 odd religious buildings in Barcelona, 10 are left untouched, 50 are totally destroyed. The civil war divided Spain for three years as the opposing ideologies battled for the country's future. Meanwhile, Barcelona's anarchist revolution was snuffed out. The communist faction within the Republic united to destroy the anarchists and their powerful militias. The left continued to splinter, and in 1939, Barcelona eventually fell to the fascists. Franco wiped out his opposition and ruled as a dictator until his death in 1975. The divisions that caused the civil war have never been fully addressed, and Spain's policy on the subject has been one of silence. But was that the end of the story? Is it possible to just sweep this history under the rug? So we asked Nick, what if any legacy of the anarchist movement might exist today. It comes up every now and again, it's got different names, it's called anti-systema, it's called anti-globalization, it's called the anti-capitalist movement, but, you know, and the indignados last year. But is anarchism coming back? Anarchism's coming back perhaps not as a formal movement yet, but informally it's still there, it's, it's, it's constantly there in Barcelona society. After a pretty intense history lesson, this symbol was starting to make a little more sense. We knew we couldn't rush to conclusions, but by learning about Barcelona in 1936, we had a bit more perspective on Barcelona in 2012. So we set off to answer our initial questions. What exactly is the Akupa movement? And how is it related to Barcelona's past? is the building of 15 October, which is the day a year ago last week when community activists took over this abandoned building from a bank and gave it over to 11 families who lost their homes. It's still alive, albeit with people who are over 60 years old, but I've seen grandmas rock climbing today and really kicking ass.